this video is about Arabian horses when it comes for the shape or the body conformation of the Arabian horse and how important was it in the past for Arabians and how it changed through the years and right now it's completely different than what they used to believe or think. Arabian horses in a common general way are in the middle between let's say cold blood European horses and some Eastern horses like for example the Mongolian horse. So compared to the uh, ponies or the Mongolian horses, the Arabian horse is a little bit higher or taller than them. Compared to the European horses, the Arabian horse is very short or at least not as tall or as high, as big, as muscular as the cold blood horses or even the warm blood horses in Europe. In the past, and even now, people love anything rare. A rare number, a rare car, a rare color, usually you will like it. You want to have it. So, they, for example, in the past, Arabians used to love uh, a dark color horse, especially the black color, we call it Adham in Arabic, uh, because it's rare in Arabian horses. Most Arabian horses are bright colored, especially gray or what we call yellow, which is white. Of course, it's called uh, in English gray, but the white color or the bright color is actually something common between Arabians. So they love something different. They love their rare colors which happens to be black in the case of an Arabian horse. The opposite goes for Euro Europeans, for example. They love the grey horse, what uh, normal people call it white and horse people call it grey, because usually European horses called blood horses, warm blood horses, are uh, going to be dark when it comes for the colour. So when you get a grey or a white uh, cold blood or warm blood horse, it's actually rare, that's why you like it, that's what you want it, if you can. But, it's not enough. The same goes for the uh, shape of the body or the body conformation of the horse. For example, Arabians loved the tall, high horse. Arabians in the past loved the big, muscular horse. Because usually, Arabian horses are not. The tall, high, muscular, big Arabian horse is actually rare. So you want to gain or you want to own a, a special horse, a rare horse, compared to other horses. But the problem is, why is he high or tall or muscular or why is his color different than the others? Not just is he different or not. So if he's completely pure when it comes for the bloodline, they know his father, they know his mother, they know his ancestors, they, ha they have his, let's say, pedigree and they have his bloodline and they are sure about his bloodline. He is a pure Arabian horse who happens to be high or tall or long or muscular. When I say long, I mean the, the length of the back and the neck, like the uh, length or the distance from the tail to the ears of the horse is long and he's high or tall from the ground to the back and he's uh, let's say wide in the chest and he's muscular and big but at the same time he's completely pure of course you want that because it's rare in Arabian horses the same goes for, for the color if uh, he's a rare color for example black color but he's completely pure uh, blood or his uh, bloodline is very pure why not you want to have that the problem is these days people are going to do two things in my opinion you have one side who keep doing that without caring about the bloodline. So no matter how tall or high the horse is, they want him. Even though if he's high or tall or muscular or wide or long because he has a different bloodline in him. He's not pure. His length or his height or his uh, muscles are coming from the bloodline in him that, has, that, that happens to be a different bloodline than Arabians. He's not a pure Arabian horse. So yes, he's tall, yes, he's high, yes, he's muscular, but all of that came from the bloodline uh, that, let's say, he took from other breeds, not just Arabians, which means it's a dis disadvantage or a bad thing, not a good thing. When it comes for the bloodline, he, he could be a good horse when it comes for the body conformation or the shape of the body. But his bloodline is not pure and because of that, he became tall or high or long or white or muscular or even a very rare, beautiful color. So if that special thing or advantage came from a different bloodline, for Arabians in the past, it's not an advantage, it's not a good thing, it's a bad thing. 
But when it happens and you are totally sure about his bloodline, it's an advantage, it's a good thing. So it's not just the color or the shape of the horse or uh, his body conformation. It's about why is he like that? Why is the color like that? Why is his height or length or width or uh, muscles are like that? If it came from his uh, weird, impure bloodline, it's a disadvantage for Arabians in the past. If it's inside the pure bloodline, it's a good thing. Why is it a good thing? Why should it be a good thing? Because it's simply rare. Now, the other type of people right now are the people who want to stick to the rules without admitting that having a rare horse is actually a good thing. For example, yes, Arabians are usually short. So any tall or high horse in his eyes is not pure. Arabians are usually not very big or muscular. So any big muscular horse in his eyes is not pure. Arabians are usually uh, in bright color. Their, their color is bright. Gray, white, yellow, whatever you want to call it. Or brown, uh, or chestnut, or sometimes bay, or bright bay. Whatever. So if, if the color is very dark, he thinks there is a problem with the bloodline. That makes no sense. Because Arabians in the past, even in their poems and their books, always uh, loved and bragged about have, uh, having or owning a lot of different rare horses when it comes for the, uh, the, the rare color, rare uh, shape of the body or the body conformation, and sometimes even uh, the look of the horse is different compared to other, to the, to other horses, horses when it comes for the ears and the eyes and the legs or whatever. So you cannot deny that they loved owning rare horses as long as the bloodline is pure. So it's not fair to say that this horse has a bad bloodline just because he's a little bit different than other horses. But yes, it's not fair to say that any horse who is different is always better because sometimes he's different because he has a bloodline in him. So the first step you should make, especially for Arabians in the past, is to make sure about the bloodline. If you are sure about the bloodline, okay, choose whatever you want. If it's a, did, uh, an advantage in your eyes, so what? If it's a disadvantage in your eyes, so what? But if he has a bad bloodline in him, or should I say a different bloodline in him than Arabians, like he's not a pure Arabian horse, that means the advantage that you believe is an advantage came from the impure bloodline in their eyes. Even though you think it's an advantage, you think it's a good thing because it's rare and you like it. But to them, that uh, thing that you call God or you call an advantage came from the unpure bloodline in his, let's say, pedigree or in his ancestors or in his bloodline. So people right now are two uh, kinds or two types. You have the people who stick to the rules without accepting any, let's say, exceptions, which makes no sense at all because it's completely the opposite of what Arabians did in the past. They always uh, loved having a tall, high, long, wide, muscular, dark colored horse as long as he's pure. The other type or the other kind are the ones who uh, don't care about uh, the bloodline anymore and the uh, uh, higher or the taller and the longer and the wider and the more muscular your horse is, the more pure he is in his eyes, which makes no sense at all. So you should be in the middle. There is a rule and there are some exceptions. Arabians are actually short compared to so many horses, let's say 14 and a half hands or 15 hands, even though the hands could change from one person to another, but in a common general way, let's say 14 hands and a half to 15 hands. More than 15 hands for Arabians usually means to them, in their way of thinking, in the past, that the horse has a different bloodline in him. But inside the rule, He's still, let's say, between 40 and a half and 15 or 50 and a half, let's say. And he's completely pure when it comes with the bloodline. Usually, they love the rare things. What are the rare things in Arabians? A dark color is usually rare, especially black. A very big muscular body is uh, usually rare. A very tall, high, long, wide Arabian horse is usually rare. And people love what's rare. The other uh, type, as I said before, uh, care about uh, the bloodline to a point that they actually deny that Arabians loved the rare 
uh, how it is when it comes to the color or the body. So my opinion is very simple in this issue of matter. Yes, there is a rule that you cannot deny, and if you deny it, you know nothing about Arabians or uh, the history of Arabian horses or uh, Arabian horse owners in the past. But a lot of people take advantage of that and try to attack the bloodline of any horse who happens to be tall or high or muscular or dark when it comes for the color. To me, it's simple. If you have the pedigree with you and you are sure about his ancestors or grandfathers or mothers and you are sure that he's a completely pure Arabian horse, in that case, you are safe. You know that the horse is pure and the uh, things that you like or call an advantage can be called a disadvantage or a bad thing by someone else, but he can't prove that your horse is not Arabian. Now, of course, there is a completely different issue when it comes for is he good or not? Like, is it a real advantage or a disadvantage that is something completely different, a different matter or issue? Like when I say the Arabian horse who happens to be tall or high or muscular or long or very dark could be having these advantages because his bad bloodline or like he's not very pure or his bloodline is not a pure Arabian bloodline. Is that an advantage or a disadvantage? That's a different issue. Because some people could actually talk about the bloodline itself. Like, is a pure bloodline better? That's a different issue, a different matter. Yes, a lot of pure bloodlines, Arabians or uh, other uh, breeds, could be bad. When it comes to the body confirmation, you could actually hate those. And other breeds who happen to be Anglo-Arabian or not pure Arabians or not a pure bred of any type of horses, and you like it. When it comes for the body of the horse, the horse himself. But when you talk about the bloodline, we care about breeding. We care about the foals and the fillies that you will get from the mare or from the stallion. So it's a different issue. So my, my issue here is the bloodline. Not any horse who gets out from the rule of the Arabian horse when it comes for the shape and the color is actually not a pure Arabian. You have to make sure first. When you are sure that... Uh, the things in this horse came from his unpure bloodline, okay, he's not pure. Even though he's still good in your eyes, but he's not pure. But if he's a pure horse and he happens to have all these things, yes, you have the right to call it or think it's an advantage. And actually, Arabians in the past did believe it's an advantage and they loved having a horse with these advantages. That's my opinion about tall, muscular, long, wide, Arabian horses. It's not always an, adv an advantage, but if you are sure about the bloodline, it is an advantage in my opinion and in the eyes of many or even all Arabians in the past. When I say in the past, like 15, uh, 500 years ago and more, like not just 50 years or 60 years ago, I mean the past, real past. That's my opinion about this issue of matter. Oh, yeah.